We are privileged to be here in front of the great Poncho Sanchez. Welcome back to the Central Avenue Jazz Festival, Poncho Sanchez. Thank you. Thank Honored you. to be here with you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, you know, I just want to say that this is a dream come true for me hmm. to sit here with you. I've seen you many times. Um, we have something in common, and I'll tell you what. Growing up, you know, my father used to hang out on Central Avenue, and he was a jazz head. He named me after Dexter Gordon. And yeah. there was one album that I kept, I just couldn't take my eyes off of. It's a yellow album, a drawing. A man named Ed Renfro drew it. I used to try to count all the sombreros on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I, could, I couldn't figure out this band with a bull. You know, I think I put the record on. <laughs> You know what record I'm talking about. Uh, Latin concerts. The Cal Latin Jada. concert. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> that record intrigued me. And I know that's one of the cherished records for you. Um, and I just wanted to say that, that that record was my introduction to Latin music. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, a great Cal Jader record. And at that time, uh, Cal Jader had Mongo Santa Maria in his band. Mongo. Mongo Willie Bobo. Willie Bobo. Al McKibben. And Vince Guaraldi on right. piano, that that was his band at the time you know, on that record right there. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Cal told me that uh, they recorded. If you listen carefully, they, they took most of it out. There was a live audience in the studio. That's what I thought. Yeah, and that they were that was the first time they tried. They actually said it didn't work out that well. If you listen, there, you could hear a couple of doors closing and, and people talking. <laughs> right. But they, they tried to take it out because it, it didn't work out as good as they thought. Oh, but, it, okay. but it's still a great record, man. That's, that's a great record. That I know exactly my... what you're talking about. And all them little pictures in there. I used to try to count the sombreros yeah, and all the little, yeah, you know, of, like. I remember I did the same thing, man. Right? I, would, I would check out the little signs in there. You know? Right, the little signs, too. Yeah. I'm looking at the bull like, this can't happen. How could a band play with a bull? You yeah. Know? Yeah, that was, that's a classic. So I'll start by saying, you know, I'm, I'm such a fan because you are the quintessential band leader to me. I don't think there's, there are many artists that, that I think have a handle on what it is to lead a band. I even heard stories of, of Cal Jader even saying that to you, knowing you were a band leader early on. Wow. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, Dexter, it's true. Uh, I mean, I didn't know I was going to be a band leader. You know, I, all I wanted to do is when I was growing up learning to play conga and timbales. Actually, I learned to play timbales first, then went to the conga. And before all that, I was a singer. You know, that's why I sing a little bit in the band. <laughs> right. So I was a singer first in the very first band I was in when I was in the seventh grade. I was a singer of a soul band, so you were, yeah, right, rock you and roll young. band. Mm -hmm. And then I got into the, the band. I played timbales a little bit, learning to play the timbales, and then the congas. But um, I definitely did not have any idea I was going to be a band leader. But I uh, owe a lot to people like Cal Jader, Eddie Cano, uh, Tito Puente, Mongo, Willie Bobo. I got to know all of them guys. They're, they're my heroes yeah. in life. And I, I actually grew up hanging out with them, actually playing. I played with all them bands. Yeah. And, um, and I learned a lot just by being around them. Right. So that I learned from the greats, you know, from, you know, I don't learn out of books or they, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have no videos, <laughs> they didn't have none of that stuff right. growing up. Yeah. First so hand. I learned from the first hand from yeah. the people themselves. So, you know, um, uh, even uh, Dizzy Gillespie, Dizzy was a guest with our band several times. I was a guest with his band. And in tour, we did tours in Europe uh, and Dizzy would be our guest. Mm -hmm. and, so many, many great people. Eddie Harris. I mean, it goes on and on. On man. and on, so, right. So I, I learned from them how they ran band and how they approached other musicians mm -hmm. and stuff. So I learned a great deal uh, from those great musicians. That's how I learned to, uh, to be a band leader. Was your family musical? Uh, no. Uh, there's, I'm the youngest of 11. Uh -huh. And I have six sisters and four brothers. No musicians. I'm the only musician in the family. But the they love music. Oh, wow. They wow. love music. As a matter of fact, I got all these ideas and, and uh, got exposed to the music from them. Yeah. Uh, we're from uh, Laredo, Laredo, Texas, Texas right. Right, way, way down south. Yep. south on the Texas. border, right? right, right yeah, there, yeah, we're right on the border, right. <laughs> yeah. 
the Rio Grande separates uh, Nuevo Laredo, mm -hmm. and then Laredo is on the U.S. side. That's beautiful. But uh, uh, we were all born there, and I moved to Los Angeles when I was uh, four years old. And so all my older brothers and sisters, they caught the first wave of the mambo and cha-cha-cha music that came from Cuba to, to California. To California. Of course, you know, New York City, and then came out to California. That's right. So uh, I owe a lot to my brothers and sisters because they were the ones buying the Cal Jada records at that time. Uh, um, and at that time, they, they, at my, so my brother had some jazz records. And they would listen to the jazz station from time to time. And, uh, um, but they were also into old doo-wop music. Uh, we used to watch the Johnny Otis show on TV all the time. Mm -hmm. and they, they never missed the Johnny Otis show. So we, we were into to rhythm and blues music. Uh, Latin, uh, Latin well, they used to call it Afro-Cuban music or mm -hmm. uh, Latin jazz. And at that time, the word salsa hadn't been used yet. Right. It was called musica cubana, which is Cuban music. I never knew or, that, okay. Or, or musica musica latina, cubana. which is okay. Latin music. Right, you know? right. Or they just called it the mambo or the cha-cha-cha music, right. music. So my brother and sister would, would buy all them records, uh, Machito, uh, Orquesta Aragón, Tito Aragón, Aragón, right, all, right, all the Cubano the, stuff, right. All the great Benny stuff. Benny Moray and all that, that yeah, stuff that they, was coming in, right. Then later on, they started buying the Jokuba records uh, mm -hmm. in the 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, that when, and then the Boogaloo era came in and all that. Right. So <laughs> I, I learned that all from at home listening to the records. Right, you know I mean? right, your family playing the records. Yeah. So do you remember the early Los Angeles scene that you kind of immersed into when you were here, this... The, the clubs, maybe even Central Avenue, I'd love to know. Yeah, well, I knew about Central Avenue because of all the jazz stuff, but just I would hear it through the radio, because uh, those days we used to listen to uh, uh, KBCA uh, 105 on your FM dial. Respect, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And I listened to KBCA all the time, you know, and later on it changed to KGO. Yeah, I remember right. when it was uh, KBCA, that was, I used to hear that station all day long. Wow. You know? So I would hear the stories of other musicians when they'd interview them, you know. Um, but I, I, did, I was just a young boy, like seventh, eighth grade, and I was already into the, the, uh, jazz records. I was buying my own jazz records already. Yeah, yeah. And, and collecting my brother and sister's old scratch Latin records, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but uh, um, for me, I grew up uh, right around the, the hippie era, you know what I mean? So I, I wasn't too happy about that, you know what I mean? I really, uh, all my friends were into, uh, well, Jimi Hendrix, of course, and uh, they were into, uh, the cream, uh, the iron butterfly, uh, you know, all those kind of psychedelic acid rock bands. And, right. and they'd come to my house. I had my mother's garage all set up with my little record player and all that. <laughs> and I'd put on Machito and Tito Puente and, and, and Cal Jader. And my friends didn't like it, you know what I mean? They, they wanted to hear acid rock music. Right. So man, you know, I, I didn't have, I think I had a couple, two Jimi Hendrix records, so I'd put those on when my <laughs> friends were over. But man, they'd leave, I'd put on Machito, T. Rodriguez, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cal Jader, you know, I, that's what I liked, you know. Right, right. Um, Art Blake and the Jazz Messengers, you know, of Lee course. Morgan, Freddie Hubbard, all that stuff, right, you know. Right, right. That's the records I had, and that's what I liked. So uh, it was a little rough for me, because uh, that, that era was uh, psychedelic rock music, and. Mm -hmm. I, I really didn't care for that, you know. I, yeah. Uh, I'd rather, I was, listen, I had a lot of soul records, you know, that's right. when the, the soul band I know it's the James Brown the connection James, oh, yeah, for you. Man, is, you know, is, right. James Brown, Wilson Pickett, Otis Redding. Yeah, the R&B, like, yeah, yep. Uh, all the Motown stuff, you know, the early Motown stuff I, I love is still, still today. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. The and Temps people, and, the, and the Four Tops and all right. that, you know what I mean? Right, absolutely. So I, I grew up with like that, you know, that's how I grew up and that's what I like. With a whole hodgepodge of things yeah. in your listening, yeah. So the club, the first club I ever went to, because I was too young to, to go to the clubs, my sisters, would, they used to go to the Hollywood Palladium when they had the Latin holiday dances there. And they'd come home and I was a little kid, they would tell me about the dances they had there and they would see Cal Jader and uh, uh, they, they, all the bands that would fly in from New York to, mm -hmm. to play there. And, and then finally, when I started going out, the very first club I went to was the old lighthouse in Hermosa Beach. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. When Hard Rumsey uh, still ran it, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, and so I, record. I, yeah. I went in there when I was in high school because they would, they would let you in. I think it was $2 at the door if you had your student body card. You know, you had to show your, <laughs> like, you know, I was in 10th grade or something. I showed my, right. from school, you know, the right. little card. They put you in the back or something. Yeah. Where they put, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you had to sit on the one side. Yeah, only, one side of the And back. you could only... Uh, 
of course, no liquor, right? So, right. Uh, uh, we used to drink cherry cokes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it, uh, two drinks per set, right? So I had to drink two cherry cokes after a while, man. Number yeah, right. sugar, <laughs> number <laughs> sugar, <laughs> this thing. Right. You know? yeah, I think I leave this one. You one know eyes what I mean? open, right? Yeah, yeah. man. Like, too much, uh, too much funny. sugar and then cokes, man. But um, I seen a lot of great uh, bands play there. I mean, I, I, I see the Jazz Crusaders play there at the, the Lighthouse, and of course, many years later, the gra Jazz Crusaders were guests on my records, you know? Beautiful, yes. And, and that's like a dream come true to, to grow up as a kid watching Wayne Henderson, Wilton Felter, you know, Joe Sample play. Like, I mean, they were from here to there, right, to me. Right. And I would go see them play, man, like, uh, you know? And the same as Mongo Santa Maria, I remember when Mongo had the band with Armando Peraza was in his band. Both conga players were in the in the band together. Yep. You know, it was Mongo's band, and I swear he was that close to me. You know, yep. and and I'd get there an hour early just to stare at his drums. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'd be just staring at the congas for an hour. You know, yeah. and then when he'd walk in, it was almost too much for me, man. I mean, like there he is, there he is. You know what I right, mean? Right, right, right. The man. I'm that way. I was just telling my friend that <laughs> I, I can't breathe. I'm like, yeah, okay. that's the way I felt, man. Yeah, yeah. And he'd be right in front of me, you know. And our, and that band, Armando Peraza, was also the, another great conga drummer. He was in that band with him. Met two conga players in front of me. Ooh. Man, they started playing. I was like, <laughs> I mean, I was scared and yeah. in heaven at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So I learned a great deal by watching them, the way they did everything and the way they played, you know. And I did that with Willie Bobo's band and a lot of different bands like that. But, but Mongo was my main man, you know. Yeah. And then of course, uh, uh, Dexter. Many years later, uh, uh, Mongo and myself, we became very good friends. Beautiful. And I, I even have a son named Mongo. I, I named my first son after Mongo. Oh, beautiful, man. And I, wow. and, and I have another son. Uh, his name is Tito. Mm -hmm. Julian Tito Sanchez. That's what we do, right? Yeah, I named him after my, I got a son named Yusef after Yusef Latif. Oh. You know, so we, that's what we do, you Yusef know? Yusef was, man, Yusef was. <laughs> I met him one time in Europe, man. A sweetheart of a man. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Beautiful man. What a beautiful soul. Yeah, know? yeah. yeah. But heart. we tribute like that. We, like, <laughs> name him after our... And yeah. so you, you know what I'm talking our, about. I, yeah. Phew. I yeah. get it. You know, I wanted to um, even just kind of piggyback on what you said about the drum. You know, the drum, I, I, I don't hear this question asked of you, I, I don't know, maybe not that often, but I wanted to know, you know, our people depend on the drum, on the spirit of the drum. And, and you, when you pull out that, that talking drum, you know, on your shows and, and, and for this, this festival, I'd love to hear your thoughts about the, the spirit of the drum and just kind of like how important that instrument is to our people, our migration of people, our, our development as a people? Well, you know, the, the drums, the drum, um, I get the chills just saying that, you know, because uh, there's, the drum has a spirit, you know, and yeah. it has, it does have a soul, it does. Yes. And, and if you play the drum right, people feel that, you know what I mean? And I learned that at a very, very young age, you know what I mean, uh, about the drums. And, and like I say, watching all my heroes play, I could see, man, they would like almost go into a trance, you know, like, wow, man, this is heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah. And when, when I first came up playing, I had some, I had a conga, uh, two congas, and they were just cheap that, that me and my father bought in a pawn shop. And they weren't, they weren't very good congas, but I loved them, you know, because I, 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 I play any drum they bring me. <laughs> but when I started practicing, I learned that that I would play a pattern and start playing, try to keep the pattern straight for as long as I could. Uh, like a, it's called a three-point shuffle or la marcha or the mambo pattern, which sounds like I would do that for like five minutes straight and not just play that pattern straight and it'd be me alone in my mother's garage doing that <laughs> and I would just concentrate on that and then you start getting tired after about four or five minutes you start getting tired of just holding that thing you yes. know, like doing that but then another it, you go to another level and you get into another like a spirit or the soul of the drum and now you're doing 10 minutes and now I'm not tired no you're more. You're tired anymore. It's you, feeding you. It's, you, it's Yeah and right. then you go 15 minutes. I went like I used to go about 20 minutes just playing that one pattern oh, over and over and you can feel the the soul the spirit of the drum 
but you you gotta like let yourself go and get into it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's beautiful. And, and so the the drums uh, drums heavy, man. Uh, they the drums will talk back to you. you know what I mean? <laughs> they do. And today I play the little the little baby talking drum. You know? <laughs> yeah, that, I got yeah. a I got a, a three different sizes at home. That's the small baby one, and then a medium sized one, and there's a bigger one. Absolutely. So the the talking drums. Uh, uh, they're great, man. Oh, yeah. West Africa, you know. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for playing it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I hear there's somebody in the room that might have booked your first gig. <laughs> oh, man. <Yeah. laughs> that's, a, that's a while back. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I, I guess you could take us back to UC Santa Barbara, maybe, or Ooh. one of your man, first that, ones. Man, let me, let me think for a minute. Yeah, that, that could have been one of our first gigs. <laughs> Yeah, right, right in the early years, man. Um, Montuno or something like that? A group? Yeah, well, see, what happened is I was with Cal Jader's band. I joined Cal Jader's band in 1975. 75, right. And I was with him until he passed away in Manila in the Philippine Islands. I was with him. Yeah. I seen him die mm-hmm. of a heart attack in uh, 82. 82. I was with right. him for seven and a half years. That's right, Philippines, right. But was, what, what, ha- what happened is I was with Cal Jader's band playing all over the world touring with Cal Jader, and my homeboys... It was Ramon Banda and Tony Banda, uh, Dick Mitchell, sax player, and Sal Cracciola, trumpet player. <laughs> that, was, that was the original band way yeah. back when. Uh, later on, we met Charlie Otwell, you know, <laughs> on piano. So what happened is uh, Ramon and Dick Mitchell, the sax player, they put a little band together in, 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 in Ramon's garage, and it was just a little neighborhood thing. And they were trying to play Latin jazz stuff. They, they, they did some straight ahead stuff, and then they did some Latin jazz <laughs> stuff. And when I would get off the you road would come with Cal, back, right. I would go back and just to go drink some just beers. To hang, right, just to hang, hang with the just boys. Just to hang right. with the boys, you know what I <laughs> mean? And so I would see him rehearsing. So I'd, you know, I'd bring, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember who, uh, I think uh, Roland Mendoza could have been playing congas. So I brought my bongos. I was playing bongos. <laughs> and I said, oh, cool. this is cool when, I, when I'm out on the road with Cal Jr. I'll play bongos in the band, you right, know? Right, right. And so what happened is, uh, I think they had only, they did one gig in Carson somewhere at a little small club. They did one or two nights there. And that's the only gig that band did. They, they didn't even have a name, I, you know. So I brought that name from a, a, a band. There was a band in Portland, Oregon that was called Montuno. So I said, let's call the band Montuno. They go, well, that's a cool name. Let's do it. And then, and, and then Ramon said, can we put featuring Poncho Sanchez? And I said, yeah. So the big name, Montuno on the bottom featuring Poncho Sanchez. Right, right. I said, whenever I don't play with Cal, we'll do it. But they didn't have no gigs anyway. <laughs> so I got them a few gigs around town. Yeah. And so what happened is we'd go to play. Oh, I, I uh, talked to uh, Al Williams at the Jazz Safari. Mm-hmm. So we, we, I got him some gigs at the Jazz Safari with Al Williams, Montuno, featuring Poncho Sanchez. We get to the gig, and I'm playing bongos, and Roland Mendoza playing conga. And, and they, everybody would say, Poncho, when are you going to play conga? When are you going to go? Yeah, when are you going to play conga? And I'd go <laughs> like... Oh no, I'm the bongo player in yeah, this band. This is, and, yeah, and, and, right. and, and, and they would say, "Yeah, but you know, we we came, we paid money, we want to see you play congas." Oh, right, right. Go like, oh, right, your man. name's on the on the marquee. And I right. go, "Oh man, you know." Right, right. And so I tell Ron Brown, you, know, <laughs> you know, get on the bongos. And, and he was not that great of a bongo player. He played congas, you know. Right. So he was like, "Going oh, man, you know, I, <laughs> do I have to go over there." So he'd go there for a couple of numbers, and I'd do my thing on congas, and everybody would be, you know, happy yeah, about yeah. it. And then after all, I'd say, "Wow, wow man, it's like." You know, they uh, they want to see me play. I would tell them, man, they want to, they want me. To, he goes, yeah, I know. I see the people are asking you to play congas, you know. Right, right. And then I started bringing some charts, some tunes, because they were just doing head tunes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I got some charts, some, some charts together. Uh, this friend of mine in Portland gave me some Tito Rodriguez charts, Tito Puente charts, and I brought them to the band and we started rehearsing them. So after a while, what happened is I was getting all the gigs, and. Uh, and I was paying for the, some cats to write out charts for me, and, mm-hmm. and I started picking up ideas on tunes. Yep. And um, and then people were saying, "Don't you sing? You know, sing some of that salsa stuff." Mm-hmm. So we we it was not just a Latin jazz band anymore. Now we were doing some salsa stuff. Yeah. And I was singing a little bit. So after, you know, after a while, I just said, "Hey." Uh, this band's called Poncho Sanchez. This Latin jazz band. There it is. Montuno is it's not happening no more. There's nothing there. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I get you know, it. I was getting the gigs. I was paying for the charts. I, I was it. I was making up all the two. I mean, I guess. Hey, man. It is what it is. And I, I remember I told the cats, "Is there any objections? Any, any problem here?" And they were saying, "You're getting the charts. You're getting the gigs. It's your band." <laughs> and that that started way back then, and. Um, and that, 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 that was right around the time of that Santa Barbara gig. Mm-hmm. That's when things were just 
starting out and, and coming together. Mm -hmm. But I was still with Cal Jader's band at the time, but uh, building my band slowly. But I never uh, thought I was going to lose Cal Jader. Right, right. And and I would for me, I would still be happy today if I was in Cal Jader's band. That's <laughs> that was my my thing, you know. But of course. He kind of passed the, uh, passed the torch the on torch to me, to and I had to go for it. You know? I know you did, yeah, in a then, beautiful way, too. And, and, and you know, there's so many, uh, I mean, we, we, we need to talk for a couple of days. You know, yeah, but, I know. But, you know, the other thing is, you know, I got a record contract with a record company where none of the other cast and band even knew how to do that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's step at a time, you start building, and I went with Discovery Records. I did two records. Actually, when I did the Discovery Records, there was a record called uh, 1979. The record was called Poncho. That was my first record Poncho I did right. under, my, under my own name. I was remember, Discovery right. Records. Mm -hmm. And then I did the second one called uh, Palante, oh, Straight Fantasy Ahead. Fantasy or something, right? right. Uh, no, this was, it was on, on Discovery Records. Right, Discovery, right. Albert right. Marks. And and I had that the, the band Montuno together already, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But they weren't good enough to record yet. They, they were not it was not happening, it was not good enough yet, and they were a little nervous to record, so that's why I used Claire Fisher, and Gary Foster, mm -hmm. and Steve Huffstetter, a lot of great musicians from LA on my first record. Right. right. Yeah, as a matter of fact, okay. the first record, Poncho, Ramon Banda, he took the picture in the studio when I was recording of the cover of the album. Oh, right, right. And then my brother did the artwork around that's it. That's beautiful, yeah. So, so I had the we had the band Montuno, but the band wasn't ready good enough to record yet. Yeah. So I did two records, of course, without the band. And then after Cal passed away, I got a contract. Cal Jeter got me a contract with uh, uh, Concord Records. With Concord, right, right. Uh, 1982. Right. And then the band was ready. And then you were ready. So we did Sonando. That was our first. Yeah, Sonando. You Concord. talk about Sonando, which yeah, I love. Concord yeah. record. Yeah. And then uh, it went on. Uh, I think we have 28 albums out now. So. Oh, beautiful. Thank you for that. It just, you know, you know I'd, be, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the fact that you played the first Central Avenue Jazz Festival. I think it was, what, July 27, 28, 1996? Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you remember. 96, mm -hmm. yeah. 96. Yeah, that's. Do you remember that experience? You yeah. Uh, yeah, man, that's, it's great because it's, you know, it's, it's playing for home folks, first of all. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I love that, you know, because I've, I've traveled for uh, how many years now? I mean, I've been traveling on the road for many, many years, like 50 decades, years or decades, something. Right. So when you come home, it's good to play at home. You know, I mean, I played all the major jazz festivals all over the world. Right. But it, it's something special to play for the ones at home. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, love Because you see right. your home folk. That's you know right, I mean? you do. So, and then Central Avenue, I mean, of course, by then I knew all about Central Avenue, what it would have meant to us. and. And what it means to jazz and and so it, it was just an honor and a pleasure to to do it you know what i mean yeah and um and i love soul food and barbecue too <laughs> and you know man central <laughs> avenue you walk around there in the festival man you smell that soul food and the barbecue man hey i'm a happy man absolutely you know what I mean? so are you ready to get back on the road well uh a little bit i don't want to uh you know um i'm proud to say uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna be 70 years old this year, okay. and I've been on the road since 1975. A lot of musicians think, you know, you play around town, you play here, you play. Yeah, try to go out there for 52 years, mm -hmm. man, yeah. and be on, go to all the airports all over the world. It's not easy. It, it's tough, man. It, right. It's it's a tough living, man. Um, so and you got to get flying and play that day most of the time. Most you know, of the when time, you right? Get, get to you know fly back to New York, you leave early morning. You, you give it just enough time to slip in the door and play, you know. Yeah. And Europe, forget it. That's another story, man. You know, you <laughs> you turned upside down when you get there. Absolutely. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm going back the road slowly. Uh, we were just up in Seattle, Washington, a couple of weeks ago. We did a week up in Seattle, which was great. Felt really good. But Seattle is one of my favorite places, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. So I was happy to. To go, with my wife, uh, my wife Stella travels with me now. Oh, good. In the early years, I would just run out there with the whole band and, and all that. But now my wife Stella goes with me when we go out a lot, so it makes me feel a lot better. And um, and and I I, I want to get back on the road, but not too much anymore. So I told my management Ivory Daniel, I told Ivory, uh, listen, man, you know, I, w I just want to do a couple of gigs a month. And I told him, uh, 
that you know I didn't want to be on a plane any longer than two hours no more. You know, right? Uh, uh, two and a half hours to Seattle. That's that's about it. You know. But, who are you but, taking with you though in your band now? You you. Who, I take the whole band. The, okay. What you're seeing here tonight, right. I take the, these guys all travel. This is my band now. Beautiful. Today and these are the guys all go with me. And you know what? I got a great bunch of guys, man. All these brothers up here with me, man. They, they're the best, man. And on the road, everybody helps each other out. I mean, it's a band. This is, you know, a lot of bands have bands, but not they don't hang together. You know, right. it's like a family. You know, we we yeah. all watch out for each other. If there's something we need, we ask one another, and it usually gets done right quick. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm blessed, man. I got a great band with me, and uh, I'm healthy enough to travel still, but. I'm cautious right now because we got to be careful still. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, we went to Seattle and um, and uh, we're going to, to Jacksonville. So there, there's a, a few things coming up like that. But uh, you know, I'm trying to stay more locally for now. Yeah, well, we're uh, happy to have you here. Yeah, at you know, so I've been Fest. doing more local <laughs> stuff for right now. Very happy to but have. Let's you. see how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You want to talk a little bit about these beautiful drums? Who, who, what are you playing here? Yeah, thank thank you, Dexter. Uh, these drums here, man. Um, it's a company out of uh, Canada. Uh, they're called Moperk from uh, Canada. And what happened is I was with Remo for many, many years, and I helped invent these heads here. These are synthetic heads. And it's amazing, the, these heads uh, that I'm using on these uh, Moperk congas, these are natural wood, uh, 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 wood with stainless steel hardware. Mm. You don't find too many drummers, uh, too many drum companies that use stainless use steel stainless hardware because right. it's much much more expensive and harder to work with but this this drums outlast all of us but these drums here I, I, I've used the Remo heads with the Mo Per Conga mm -hmm. and the, the heads I helped invent those heads with Remo Belly himself and, and people in the company and uh, it's been a blessing for me because we invented these synthetic heads I'll try to make a long story short you know, Remo Belli, he invented the pl plastic drum heads. And for many, many years, that when I was a young boy coming up, drummers, you know, the trap drummers, mm -hmm. everybody used calf heads. They right. were uh, from a calf right. uh, on, the, on the drums. Yeah, real stretched, yeah, over there. Yeah, so Remo invented the plastic drum heads. And he told me he got a film from a, a movie camera from the old days. He got some kind of film and he put it on the snare drum. And he took it around town and let the cats play on it a little bit. And everybody said, wow, it's, it, that, that snare drum head sounds great. It's nice and crispy and clean. Mm -hmm. But the only thing is, in those days, they used to use brushes a lot on the snare drum, right. brushes. Right. He goes, you can't use brushes because it's too, too smooth, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can't hear the brush. No work. texture on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah. texture on, mm -hmm. on the head. Mm -hmm. So he spray painted some white spray paint on their roof. <laughs> and then they took it around town, and oh, the cats were getting the brush sound out of there, and they go, wow, this thing's swinging now, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's what started the Remo drum heads, right. plastic drum heads, okay? Yeah. I don't know anybody that uses mm -hmm. calf heads on drum sets no more. I don't either. They all use Remo plastic heads. The whole world does. Yeah. Well, he came to me about three times, maybe four different times, and said, Poncho, I want to invent a conga with you. So I, ha I used to have the Poncho Sanchez conga with Remo, and I want to invent some synthetic heads for congas. And I told him, uh, uh I said, you did it with drums, but you can't do it with congas because the conga is different. It's, it's skin on skin and the hands. It's not like playing with a stick or something, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, Poncho, that's why I come to you. I know you know about that. Uh, I want to see if you can, tr let's try something, you know? So I, I told him no two or three times when he come to see me play. And one day he said, let me take you out to lunch, man, and let me explain <laughs> to you what, an idea I have. So I went for it. And when I went to the Remo factory, oh, my God, I couldn't believe how immaculate and organized it was. Well, well anyway, long story short, he had some funny plastic heads that he had kind of made for congas. And then I went there and said, no, th th this is wrong. This sounds wrong. So I used to go to Remo. Uh, once a month for two years, mm -hmm. testing out new ideas on conga heads till what we have here today. That's they have uh, yeah. five different types of synthetic plastic heads. And I don't know any conga players anymore that use rawhide heads, <laughs> skins. Everybody uses those oh, all over the world yeah. now. And the good news is every five months, 
I get royalty checks <laughs> from those synthetic conga beautiful. heads. Beautiful, beautiful. So, you know, once again, I'm a happy man about that. You yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely. And then, uh, and and the 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 Montpur congas are beautiful sounding, natural sounding drums. Well, we're happy to have you at the Central Avenue Jazz Festival, Poncho Sanchez. How about a round of applause for Poncho Sanchez? Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful to meet you. Thank you.